Now, this is a matrix option. It's kind of like select all, but as you can see, um, it has a matrix like two options, right? A list of actions, what is appropriate, what is inappropriate. Now, as you can see, for each action, you can only choose one. You cannot choose appropriate and inappropriate. I hope that makes sense. So that's the matrix style question. You can only choose one from each line. So the question is asking you, click to specify which nursing actions are appropriate or inappropriate when considering this patient scenario. Okay, so I'm gonna read through each action. You tell me if it is appropriate or inappropriate. Notify the physician of this increased respiration. Now we know that in NCLEX, based on the strategy, notifying the provider or contacting the provider is one of your last options, right? Because NCLEX is testing you what you know as a nurse, what will you do as a nurse, not what a doctor does, right? So that if there is something a nurse can do, well, that's your right answer, right? Contacting the provider scenario comes when patient is so critical and you need them to be here and help you out, right? So do you think his condition, his respiratory acidosis, pink frothy sputum, you know, his respirations are going up, saturations are dropping tremendously. Do you think you need to call the doctor now? Appropriate or inappropriate? We have one, uh, so one answer so far, appropriate. Awesome. We're waiting on some more. Oh, we have another one, appropriate, another appropriate. Excellent, excellent. Even though I said, I was trying to trick you there, right? Even though I said, when applying strategy, contact the provider is one of the last options. In this scenario, it is totally appropriate, right? Your patient is in respiratory acidosis, he's crashing. You do need to call that provider. It's totally appropriate. Great job. Option number two, or the question number two. So the patient has tachycardia, right? Heart rate was 135. You administer beta blocker to decrease the heart rate. So when I say beta blocker, you are thinking about medications like metoprolol. Can I administer that medication to decrease the heart rate? Appropriate or inappropriate? All right, we're getting some answers. One says inappropriate, another appropriate, another one appropriate. These answers keep coming, Anzu, so. Um. <laughs> All right, we have more inappropriate. All right, well, that's excellent. That's excellent because it is inappropriate. Beta blocker like metoprolol decreases your blood pressure, decreases your heart rate. But in this patient scenario, is that going to be helpful? No, because the poor heart is trying to pump faster so it can provide more oxygen to the brain. Your underlying problem is low oxygen. So until you fix that underlying problem, um, giving a beta blocker is not gonna help, right? Once the patient's oxygenation is better because the heart is trying to compensate by increasing the heart rate. So until you correct that underlying problem, you're not gonna fix that tachycardia with beta blocker, right? And it could be detrimental too. So here it is an inappropriate action, great job. Action number three. Prepare the patient for possible intubation. What do you think? Does this patient need to be intubated? Inappropriate. We've got some inappropriates. More coming. Someone says appropriate. Okay. Another inappropriate, appropriate. Seems like we're a little split here. Right, right. It does, it does look like it. Mm -hmm. Well, so think about this patient, right? Who is in pulmonary edema. Do you think pulmonary edema is a medical emergency? Let me ask that question. I'll wait for you to help me, Steph. Um, yes. Do you think 
Pulmonary edema is a medical emergency or a critical condition. We're still getting some inappropriate and appropriate. Okay. Oh, Mukesh says yes. All right, Mukesh, you are correct. Right, because, you know, one of the doctors actually explained to me, think about a bucket or a pile of water and put your lungs in it, okay? That's how a patient with pulmonary edema feels. They are floating in water. They cannot breathe. There is no space for ventilation perfusion to happen. It's filled with water, right? So this poor patient is going to crash if we don't intubate them and give them some oxygen and then maybe some diuretics to help that fluid out. If you don't address that right away, this patient is going to crash, right? So in now think about it. Is intubation the possible better solution for this patient? Absolutely. Okay. Last, the last um, action is obtain orders for diuretics. Whoops, I think I kind of gave the clue. But what do you think if it is appropriate or an inappropriate action? Should we give some Lasix to this patient? All right, let's see what they think here on Sue. We've got appropriate, appropriate. Collins is saying appropriate. Jennifer is saying appropriate. Appropriate. Kofi saying appropriate. Akelia is saying appropriate. Janicia appropriate. Awesome. Awesome. So, you know, that's how you save this patient with pulmonary edema, right? You intubate the patient because a patient is in a medical emergency. He needs that oxygenation. But now we need to get that fluid out. And the best way to get, do it is administer some diuretics, administer some furosemide or Lasix to this patient to get that fluid out. Excellent job, team. That's an appropriate action. All right, moving on to question number five. So this could be a standalone item too. It's called a bow tie option. So you read the question or the you know the scenario, you read the question. So you choose the condition first, okay? You can only choose one condition out of the three given. And then you decide, okay, what actions I want to do, what two actions I want to do to help me with that condition. And once I do that action, for the rest of the shift, what are the two things I should continue to monitor? So all that tied together, right? You first select the problem of your patient, you select a couple of actions to help that patient. And then for the rest of the shift, what do you monitor? Okay, so let's read the question. Complete the diagram by selecting from the choices below to specify one potential problem or condition the patient is experiencing, two actions the nurse would take, and two parameters the nurse would monitor to assess the condition. So you, we got to start off with what do you think this patient's potential condition is? Is the patient dehydrated, having respiratory distress, or are they going through hypertensive crisis? I will wait for the condition because it makes sense, right? You have to select the condition first before you choose some actions. All right, these answers are going to be coming. So you see how easy it is. You already know Mr. Dawson. He's in ICU. He's in pulmonary edema. So the rest of the questions are still about the same patient. So you're kind of building on that case. So you don't have to each time think, about a different patient, a different condition. It's kind of, you know, related to each other. It's kind of like a story, right? Um, I yeah. think it's fascinating. We've got some, we've got some answers. Action, awesome. place by Fowler, respiratory distress, a pro, uh, respiratory distress. It seems like a consensus, respiratory All right, distress. everybody agrees. Awesome. Thank you, Steph. So it is respiratory distress, right? It's pretty clear that this patient is having congestive heart failure and going through some respiratory problems. Now you got to think about some actions. 
if this patient is going through respiratory distress, what are the two actions that you want to take out of the three options given? Do you want to place this patient on droplet precautions? Do you want to increase um, the oxygen on the BiPAP if the patient is on BiPAP? Do you want to place the patient on high Fowler's position? Out of the three options given, which of the two are you going to do for this patient in ICU? Place in high Fowler's position. We've got that. Um, we've also got monitor oxygen saturation. Well, Not we got to think about the options that are provided, right? Oh, place in high Fowler's position, place in high Fowler's position, increase oxygen on BiPAP, increase oxygen, place on high Fowler's. I think oh, it's a yeah. consensus. Right. I think we do have a consensus to place them in high Fowler's position and increase that oxygenation through BiPAP. Excellent job. This patient, there is no information that he's infected. He needs to be in a droplet precaution, right? Pretty straightforward. So we have our problem. We have our two actions. Now this question is not done yet, right? We still have to choose what are the um, parameters that you want to monitor for the rest of the shift. So what are the two things you will monitor for the rest of the shift? So we have three options, monitor oxygen saturation, monitor the bowel sounds, and monitor vital signs. What are the two things you want to monitor for this patient? All right, we have increase O2, vital signs, monitor oxygen saturation and vitals, increase oxygen BiPAP, vital signs and oxygen saturation. Again, oxygen sat and vital signs. More of that. <laughs> yep, same answers, oxygen, that's saturation, right. and vital signs. That's excellent because that's the right answer, right? I mean, while bowel sound assessment is part of your nursing assessment, it is not critical for this patient in this scenario. So great job.